Hi, I'm Mike Marin, and in this video we'll talk about calculating probabilities, percentiles, and taking random samples from a normally distributed variable. Throughout this video, we will use an example with a variable x which is known to be normally distributed with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 5. We can calculate probabilities for a normal distribution using the pnorm command. To access the help menu, type help and in the brackets the command you would like help for. Or simply throw a question mark in front of the name of the command. As mentioned, we can use the pnorm command to calculate probabilities for a normal random variable. Let's go ahead and calculate the probability that x is less than or equal to 70 for our example. To do so, we would like the probability for a normal variable, the probability associated with a value of 70, we have a mean of 75, a standard deviation of 5, and we would like a lower tail probability, so we will set this equal to true. By lower tail, we mean less than 70. In R, the default for the lower tail argument is true. So it's not necessary to include this if we would like a lower tail probability. Let's go ahead and calculate the probability that x is greater or equal to 85. To do so, again, we can use the pnorm command. We would like the probability associated with 85. And here, we would like the upper tail. So we would set the lower tail to false. The pnorm command can also be used to calculate probabilities for z, the standard normal. Let's go ahead and calculate the probability that z is greater or equal to 1. To do so, again, we want the probability for a normal. Here we want a z value of 1. This has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Again, we want to set the lower tail to false have an upper tail probability. We can now see the area above a Z score of 1 is approximately 16%. The QNORM function can be used to calculate quantiles or percentiles for a normal random variable. Let's go ahead and calculate the first quartile for this variable. To do so, we will use the QNORM command here we would like to find the 25th percentile, or the first quartile. This variable has a mean of 75, a standard deviation of 5, and again, lower tail equal to true. We would like a lower tail probability of 25%. 71.6 is the approximate value for the first quartile. We may also want to find and or plot the probability density function. To do so, we may use the dnorm function. Let's go ahead and create a plot of the probability density function for this example we've been discussing. A normal variable with a mean of 75, standard deviation of 5. To do so, first we will create a sequence of x values that run from 55 up to 95 in increments of 0.25. We will save this in an object called x. Here we can see the sequence we've created. We can then go ahead and find the value of the probability density function for each of these x values using the dnorm command. We will save this in an object called dens. Here we would like to find the values of the probability density for the normal associated with x, a mean of 75, and a standard deviation of 5. We can then go ahead and plot the values of x versus the densities to see the probability density function. If we like, we may have all of the points in this plot attached using a line. To do so, we can include the type argument and set this equal to L 
for a line. If desired, one may add a title to this plot and label axes using arguments covered earlier in this series of videos. I've just copy and pasted this command I entered earlier to produce a nice plot with labels and titles. If one would like to add a vertical line at the mean of 75, this can be done using the AB line argument. Here we would like to include a vertical line at the value x equals 75. Finally, one may wish to have R draw a random sample from a normally distributed population. To do so, we can use the rnorm command. Let's go ahead and draw a sample of n equals 40 observations from this normally distributed population with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 5. Again, I will go ahead and save this random sample in an object labeled RAND. Here we can see the random sample we've selected. We can also take a quick look at a histogram for this random sample. It's worth noting here that even though this sample was taken from a normally distributed population, the sample histogram itself may not necessarily look very normal. Thanks for watching this video and make sure to check out my other instructional videos.